Well, good evening, folks. Uh, this is Andrew Cummings here, and once again, very happy to be with you for this Missionary Monday Live. Sorry this is a little bit late. Um, I plan to do it a little earlier today. Uh, then we had an unexpected visit. A pastor friend of mine came over with his family, so we were happy to have them uh, with us. But the result is that Missionary Monday Live is a little later. However, it's not as late. It's, it's about 11 o'clock here uh, in Brazil time, which means for most of you at Eastern Standard Time now that Daylight Savings Time has hit in. His, his hit, you guys, it's it's only, what, about 9, so not quite as late as it is here. So, uh, welcome, I'm glad to have you all uh, watching, and we're going to give a quick recap, some of the interesting th things that have happened, and this has been, this has been the week for just tragic news stories, starting with one here, and then of course with what happened uh, just yesterday in the United States. Uh, what happened here, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Uh, last Wednesday, uh, last Wednesday we were um, at prayer meeting and uh, at our church, and one of the ladies gave her prayer request for a little girl who had gone missing, 10-year-old girl. So we, of course, prayed for that and kept praying for that, and, and then no, the, the news kept coming over the WhatsApp program. I talked about that and how prevalent that is here in Brazil. Uh, last week, and um, the the news just kept coming uh, about that. And uh, at one point, they said, "Oh, she's been found. She's with her father." And then, then again, the next day, no, that that was, that's a cruel hoax. She hasn't been found. We're still looking. Keep, keep praying. So we kept praying. But then on Friday, I believe it was Friday. Uh, they found the little girl's body buried in the backyard with signs of sexual abuse. And uh, from the very beginning, the estranged boyfriend of the father, uh, the, the, no, let me try it again, the estranged, well, today that could happen. The, the estranged boyfriend of the mother was a suspect based on some activities he had engaged in before and some suspicious activity. And then so once the investigation kicked into high gear and it was a murder investigation, all of a sudden he disappeared. And, and immediately in the, in the city, uh, all over the city, signs went up all over on Facebook, on social media, on WhatsApp. Signs went up everywhere. Um, help us find this man. Help us, you know, this picture was up. You couldn't miss it. On Saturday, he was trying to get out of the city. And he almost made it. He almost made it to the bridge that le that leads off the island. But there happened to be two off-duty uh, police officers. They were actually on vacation, but they were, happened to be riding in that exact van. And as they're riding, um, they uh, the, the, they they recognized the guy, and so they they pulled out their weapons and yanked the guy off the bus and. And as God would have it, they were right on a, um, they're right next to a police checkpoint. And I guess they kind of waited until the van got to that police checkpoint. Then they yanked the guy off the van and the other policemen were there and surrounded them. Uh, and then they were immediately surrounded by a huge crowd. And if you scroll down through my Facebook feed, you'll be able to see this video. Um, it, it's, it's just, just um, extremely impressive the, the huge crowd that gathered in a short period of time, once the word had spread, they've caught this guy. It was a huge crowd. And I have a video on there that shows him waiting, being held by two police officers. And then the, and then the, um, the, the camera pans and he's being led to the car. And, and the police kind of form a corridor for him to go through as he's led to the squad car. And on either side, there's just multitudes of people screaming at him. I think some are actually trying to get him with a taser. And um, others are trying to throw things at him or hit him and yelling swear words. And, and, and then there's an, even a dog that gets in in the action, is barking at his heels as he goes through. The guy was absolutely terrified, as he should be. Um, he has, by the way, since then confessed it was him. And it, and the evidence that I've seen and that has been presented pretty much leaves little doubt as to, that, that he was the one that did it. 
there is some, uh, there is a little discrepancy, not that he was involved, but if whether or not there was someone else that was involved or at least covering up for him, that's, uh, that'll re that remains to be seen. But his, um, his future is not great. Uh, he, he will, if he makes it to trial, he will, I guarantee you, he will be found guilty. If by some technicality he gets off, he will not make it off the island. They, he will be lynched. There's just no... It, and if, if he is declared guilty and sent to jail, the, the prisoners in the jail will lynch him. I mean, this, this guy's days are, are measured in, in, in days. His life is being measured now in days and weeks. In fact, one of the biggest criminal factions here, one of the biggest gangs that's called the, the B-40, Bonge dos Quarenta, they have they've been sending out voice recordings all over social media saying basically this guy is a dead man walking uh he, the, the phrase they use is he's dead and doesn't know it uh they said we're going to kill him we're going to get videotape we're going to post this videotape all over because what he did to this girl you don't do to a girl <laughs> it's interesting that's the that's one of the biggest that's people from one of the biggest criminal factions in town that are that are morally outraged at what this guy did. Uh, it's interesting that uh, in our in our in our justice system, in, in our in our society here in Brazil, the, the criminal faction has more of a sense of justice in, 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 on some occasions than the actual justice system does, because according to the justice system, if everything were to go normally, the most this guy could, if I understand the system correctly. The most this guy could spend in jail is 30 years. And he's about 30 years old right now. So that means that at, at the most, and within 60 years, he'd be, as a 60-year-old man, he'd be walking free. Um, so this is a, this is a, the whole city was just in an uproar about this thing. Um, as I was, uh, I took my son Saturday to his computer course, and I was sitting in a little restaurant watching the TV, and uh, that showed the funeral procession, and they got... They had her casket, the little girl's casket, on a big, big fire truck, and a huge procession was following it. And I and I looked at the road, and I'm here. Hey, I know that road, and uh, it was the road. It's the road, the, the main road that goes right by our house. That I think I put on Facebook. That's less than a mile away. It's actually a little more than that. But the cemetery is about two miles away from my house. I go by every time I leave the house um, where where she was buried. So, it. I mean, it's. This community, I went, I went on um, Saturday, no, I'm sorry, Friday, just when they found the, the girl's body, I went to, um, uh, to get some chicken at a, at a barbecue chicken place that they have here, and, and uh, the, it's where I go every week, and the guy it was the same guy that was serving me the chicken, and that's all they were talking about. And I mentioned to him, I said, well, you know, this kind of makes, because Brazil does not have the death penalty, but I said, this kind of makes the death penalty seem more of an option, don't you think? And he looked at me and he said, oh, he said, he agreed with me. He said, and, and if you're a father, you, you know exactly what I'm feeling, the man said. And I, of course, I know exactly what he's feeling. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that is, that is huge. And it's, um, it's just a, this is something that of course blew up and it, because it's a, such a horrible crime involving a child, a little child, um, the epitome of innocence and somewhere, um, well, if you go, if you scroll down through my Facebook page, I've got articles there posted that will show you her picture, just the most beautiful little girl and that someone could do this to her. Um, shows the shows the level of the depravity of the human heart. I was talking someone to someone the other day about what are called the five points of Calvinism, and one of them is the um, the total depravity. And of all of the what are called the points of Calvinism, the the total depravity of man is is the most readily evident in our in the society around us. The the fact that this uh, could be done by one human being uh, to another human being. It's just unbelievable. So then, of course, I got to church and, and uh, the conversation was all about this. Because like I said, this is our community that this is happening in. And uh, church, was, church was really interesting. We did a, I got this just a side note. I got this idea from my brother Daniel who did it a couple Sundays ago at Fellowship Baptist Church in Lakeland, Florida. Um, 
I took a message from Charles Spurgeon where he talks about Luther, and I was actually going to do this last Sunday uh, for Reformation Sunday, but then if you remember, if you watched last Sunday, I got pink eye, so that didn't quite happen. So I just moved it to this Sunday, and, I, it, and, and someone had done me the favor of translating this message already into Portuguese. I went through and modified it a little bit, cut it down a little bit because it it's very long, and uh, and then I read this to the people at the church. It was really well received. In fact, one lady from the church came and said, Oh, Pastor, I needed that so much. It was, he, he takes the theme, the just shall live by faith, and just expounds this theme and at the end applies it to, to Martin Luther's life and talks about how this was a key for the conversion and life of Martin Luther. So that was Sunday. And we were kind of on a high from that. It was a really great service. And, and uh, we came back and I opened up my cell phone once I got back to the house and, and there was the news. I hadn't seen it earlier of what happened in Texas. And, um, and, and I'm looking and I'm reading this in horror. Uh, we've just gone through the horror of this event, this murder happening just right down the road from us. And I'm opening up and seeing the, the, with horror what's happening in my own country. And, and it's, with the shock of seeing that and seeing Christians um, uh, targeted in that way. And, and, and then this being on Twitter, um, which is only recommended in small doses, but being on Twitter and, and, and watching um, the responses to this and uh, how, how people can actually use this occasion when Christians have been gunned down in a worship service to somehow mock Christians. And, and I remember, it wasn't that long ago, it was last year, I was in the United States, and uh, when, when the gunman, uh, the Muslim gunman walked into a gay nightclub in Orlando and, 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 uh, and started shooting. And I was horrified by that. I was moved to, um, moved to, what's the word I want to use? Moved to compassion by that, not because of the lifestyle of the victims, not because of the religion of the shooter, but because these were fellow human beings created in the image of God, and, and they have been gunned down in a, in a completely horrific way. And I was so moved by that that I found a legitimate GoFundMe page, and I went and I actually made a small contribution. And in, in, at that time, you know, I wasn't exactly rolling in the cash, but I said, you know, this, you know these are people, and I'm going to make a small donation because of that. And what is blowing me away is that, you know, I, I see it on the part of other Christians, but on the part of a, on, on a national scale, I'm not seeing the same outrage. I'm seeing outrage about guns. I'm seeing the whole, the, the, every time, the whole po political thing about guns, and thank heavens for the two guys who were there who had guns, who could, had legal guns, who could take out the guy who had an illegal gun. That, that's not what I want to get into here. What, what's shocking me about this, I'm sitting here in Brazil and I'm watching, and once again, my only source of information is social media, and we, haven't, we don't even have a TV here at the house at the moment, so I'm not even getting news, um, not even CNN, it's just Twitter and some news accounts I follow on Twitter, but um, what's shocking me is how little actual sympathy I am seeing from people um, who are not believers. From believers, of course, Christians are shocked and outraged and horrified, and that could be any one of our churches on any given Sunday. Um, but the society at large is ambivalent to the idea that these guys were Christians and they were shot down in their surface. The most most people can seem to muster is, oh, we've got to do something about the guns. Um, guys, that's a serious problem. I don't know how much, uh, how much more I can um, emphasize this, that our society has lost a common empathy. And we don't have time to get into that and go through it, and, but, but, but there's a hardening uh, of society and, uh, and a lack and, and a diminishing, general diminishing of civility in society, and I'm sure there's lots of factors I don't want to go into. I just want to point out that that's the case, and this is something I see 
many times people ask me, well, Andrew, you live outside the country, and so you have a different perspective. What do you see from, well, that's what I see. Uh, just a lack, of, just a hardness and a lack of general civility. And I know most of the people who are watching this are believers, many in our supporting churches. And um, ultimately, there's a lot of causes and effects and so on, but ultimately, here's what I think is happening. Um, the influence of the gospel in the United States of America is... is um, is waning. The influence of the gospel is diminishing. Uh, a verse came to mind uh, talking about both here in Brazil and the situation here in Brazil in our in our neighborhood, the horrific murder that happened, and then, of course, what happened in Texas. This verse came to mind, Proverbs twenty nine eighteen, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now I've heard a couple interpretations of this question. There's no vision. Some people translate that as leadership. Um, others, others, uh, vision, uh, and, and I tend to hold to this idea, the question of a vision is actually divine revelation, where there is no divine revelation. And, and, and um, wh what is needed more than anything, both here in Brazil and in the United States, um, is, is fearless proclamation of the gospel. The next, the next line is not so commonly known in that verse says, but he that keepeth the law... Happy is he. Well, keep the law. We understand we're saved by grace, not by law. The, the righteous uh, shall live by uh, faith. Um, and, and so we understand that the law has been kept for us. Um, and, uh, and, and now we follow what is the law of love and we obey the law of Christ out of love for Christ. And so, you know, we, we follow the law not, of, not out of obligation, not out of not out of a, um, a sense of dread, but out of love for Christ. We understand this, but the, the truth remains. He, he that keepeth the law happy is he. And uh, there, is a, there is a general lawlessness and a general lack of civility, which is pervading both of our cultures, both the Brazilian culture and the American culture. Uh, in, the, in the Brazilian culture, there are, there are times, like the video I mentioned earlier, when, when, when segments of our society are on the verge of anarchy. And I see that from a distance, I see the same trends happening in the United States. And what has to happen, what has to happen, in my opinion, is that Christians uh, in both countries, we need to get rid of the fluff. We need to get right back down to brass tacks and, and proclaim the gospel at every occasion that we have, every opportunity we, that we have, fearlessly. I believe we've become much too timid. I believe we've, oh, I can't really talk about that here in the public school. You know, I'm not really allowed to do this at my job. Uh, like, you know, I could lose my job. I believe we've become much too timid. And the result is that the gospel is not having the effect in the hearts and minds of individuals. And, and, and because it's not having the, uh, an effect in the hearts and minds of individuals, it's not having effect, an effect in society. And society will only be preserved to the extent that, there, that, it, that the gospel is having some effect. I thank God for the faithfulness of, of the church there in Texas. And, and uh, um, I, I put a link, a, a fellow missionary, he's a missionary in Russia with a different mission agency, but I follow him and he, he has a lot of good stuff. Uh, his name's Caleb Suko. I think I pronounced that last name right, Caleb Suko. And he's a missionary in, in Russia and he, or not Russia, Ukraine, I believe. And he posted a, a little analysis, which I thought was very good. It's on my Facebook page. You can go and see it. Um, you scroll down and see it, and you can uh, you can see the um, uh, he he talks about the the last message that the pastor spoke uh, the Sunday previous to the attack of that church. And it's really good, and, and Caleb's analysis is really good also. So um, be sure to watch that that that's um, and read what Caleb wrote. It's really really good, and I'm thankful for the testimony of that church. Um, but, <laughs> Folks, we really, really, really need to pray for our society. And as you're praying for yours, remember that, remember that a huge proportion of the Christian workers of the world live in American society. Um, 
much less of a proportion of the Christian workers of the world live in our society here in Brazil. So as you're praying for American society, pray for our society here in Brazil. And, and pray for our believers. Pray that the gospel will be fearlessly preached from the pulpits and proclaimed in the everyday lives of our people. Um, this is essential. This is, this is what's lacking and what needs to happen more and more. Uh, that's basically what's on my mind today. I want to throw a link or two at you here. The first link, um, uh, yeah, let's see if I can find the video here. The, the first link I, I just want to put up, every week I put up a link to uh, our book, uh, Missionary Max and the Jungle Princess. And it, now it's not letting me find the video. If I don't, I'll find it afterwards and I'll put it there. A um, couple links here. And while, while I'm looking for that, let me just share with you. I have started putting these videos on a dedicated YouTube, on a dedicated channel in YouTube. Okay, so here we go. So here, the Amazon link to our books. If you're into good fiction, exciting missionary Christian fiction, then this is your this is the book for you, and you can uh, you can read that at your leisure. It's on it's on uh, it's a paper book. Also, you can get it as a Kindle uh, book as well. And then. Um, like I said, I've put up, uh, for some reason we're not wanting to open YouTube right now, but I've put, the, I've put all these things on a dedicated YouTube channel, and when this opens up, if this opens up, um, uh, I, will, I will put that um, link down there for you. And also, I want to put up just a link. Uh, we've got a couple offerings, and in the next few days, you're going to see some more work on our website, some more some more pictures of work being done at our church right now. We're redoing the electric wiring on the parsonage of the church, and uh, then we're going to be uh, looking at some. Um, then we're going to be, and for some reason, my nothing is opening up in this browser right now. Ugh, such a pain. Um, anyway, so we're going to be you're going to be seeing some work going on at the camp as well because we got a fairly decent offering a uh, good size very generous offering actually to to be able to get some work done at the camp and uh while i'm trying to open up these pages and my internet connection is not working um if if, if it doesn't work it's not going to work now but i'll go go on later and put those links there you can see some of the projects at the camp that we still have to do and uh if you're interested in helping us out with some of those projects uh, to get done uh, we would be very grateful for that so anyway that's Missionary Monday Live for the moment, just sharing these two uh, situations and observations. Pray for us here. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. We're very excited about what's going on here. Um, God has opened up some doors. Uh, we're going through them. And uh, so hopefully some interesting, very interesting things to share in the next couple of weeks. Stay tuned for a prayer letter. I wasn't able to get it out last week. Hopefully this week it will go out. You'll be able to see. Uh, I'll be able to share in writing some of the things that are going on. If you don't get our prayer letter, you can shoot me your email address, and I will be happy to put you on our list to get our supposed to be <laughs> monthly prayer letter. doesn't always happen that way, but it's supposed to be monthly. All right. Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, maybe, maybe next Monday it won't be so late. I don't know. Can't guarantee it. If you didn't get to watch the whole thing shortly, it will be up on Facebook, and I'll also have it up on our own dedicated YouTube channel so you can see that. Once again, thanks for watching. God bless. Until next week.